at 23 years old where I felt like I had achieved everything that I wanted to. I was able to achieve the career success that I wanted. I was in a healthy relationship or in a relationship that I wanted to be in. I had a lot of money. I had a lot of things under my belt. But I didn't have my relationship with God anymore because I felt like I had to set that aside and be with the world and of the world to get the things that I wanted. And I just remember being in that moment and thinking to myself, wow, I felt more fulfilled at peace and happy and joyful when I didn't have anything but I had Jesus. And I felt so empty having everything and not having Jesus at the age of 23. So I really wow. feel like that was the turning point in my life. You know, 23, that was also the year that I got diagnosed with depression and anxiety. This podcast is powered by Podcast Network Asia and Podmetrics. Welcome to the show. This is called the Narrow Door Podcast. Come on in, guys. I'm Sam, and today with me are Brother J. Paul Hernandez, who is a lay preacher at Feast Green Hills and instructor Harold Restro is instructor at New Heaven and New Earth Church of Jesus. If you have seen us before, you're probably wondering, huh, where's the other dude? Yeah, Pastor Dennis C., who is head pastor over at Victory Green Hills, is not joining us today. They have a big like planning meeting. Pinagpalit na tayo dun sa meeting na yon. So, sige lang. Ganun talaga. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. Um, Pastor D is uh, on leave today. That's cool. We have a guest who is joining us. We'll introduce her to you in a little bit. Um, before we start, though, I just want to tell you guys again, we are partnered with Versus all month of December. Yes, Brother J. Paul is wearing a Versus shirt right now. That's what they do. They will put your life verse on a shirt. You can have it put on a cap. Actually, whatever you want, I think, at this point, they can do it for you. Check with them first. Don't take my word for it. But what we're doing is shorts, maybe shorts. Who knows, right? So what we're doing is we're just inviting you guys to write to us. Tell us about your coming to Jesus story. You know, what is your relationship with God like? What is your, you know, uh, faith story? Like, how did it all happen for you guys? We'd love to hear it. The Narrow Door Podcast at gmail.com is the email address. We'll pick our four favorite ones for the month and hook you up with goodies from Versus. Also, the grand prize for the month is a Save by Versus bag, which is an emergency bag that contains all kinds of things that you could possibly need during an emergency. 51 items in total. Check it out on their website, savebyversus.com. Okay, let's get to our guest today. I haven't seen her. I I think it's been a little less than a year. I saw her right before the pandemic hit. So much has happened since I last, last saw this girl, but we first met while working at Magic 89.9 together. You see her on TV. She is the host of her own podcast, Adulting with Joy Spring. Oh, there's the giveaway. She's so cool and she's so sweet. Joy Spring is here. Hi, Joyce. Um, hi, Hello. Sam. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, I miss you so much. I'm so happy to be here. At least I get oh. to virtually see you. I know, yeah. Like before we actually started recording, we did the girly thing, like, ah! <laughs> you know, like yeah. exactly. <laughs> Sorry, <How> guys. <laughs> are, I know. How are you, sweetie? Thank you. You know what? You look like a ray of sunshine today, and I feel like we need that. We are, you know, a few days out after a typhoon hit. On the other episode, we were kind of talking about like, wow, this is a difficult time for my friends who are in ministry. So much is happening. A lot of people are just sad. And I mean, what we're talking about today also has to do with that. But you look like a ray of sunshine. I love it. Um, so you. much has happened since I last saw you. You got married. You know, this, this pandemic hit. Recently, you were <laughs> moving houses. I mean, it's, you know, big stuff. How are you managing? Uh, it's been crazy. I mean, I feel like, you know, we moved to the south so so we don't live in the city anymore we're out of metro manila it's the first time that i'm living out of metro manila my whole life that doesn't include me studying abroad and um, this is where we're gonna settle and it's just been a season of shifting and changing and and transitioning for me so it's been crazy and i got married right before uh the pandemic hit and right after taal erupted so we were supposed to get married in um 
That's right? right. So, so right, like it it hit mga two weeks before we got married. Taal erupted, so we had to change venues instantaneously. And literally two weeks after we got married, the lockdown started. So it's been just a crazy past couple of months. It's it's a weird time to be married, to be newly married. <laughs> I almost killed my husband four times this whole pen. Just four times. I'm proud of that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I really, yeah. I honestly, seriously feel like congratulations are in order for still being married after everything you've been through so early on in the marriage. That is so nuts. Um, it is, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for making time. I know you're super busy, you know, even with this quarantine situation you're still going you know you're still doing all your things and you're hosting left and right and you know what's the work situation been like for you i mean i think when the pandemic hit a lot of people had to do a pivot right and and i was one of those people i needed to make the perfect pivot of i my work my bread and butter was through traveling and hosting online uh hosting in live events and also in tv and everything got cut like my morning show i couldn't do the morning show anymore because the the segment that we host in the morning show was we had to travel to different places and host there i couldn't travel anymore for my vlog i couldn't host anymore an event so i had to make do with whatever it was that i already had which was i started doing a daily podcast with a friend of ours Erin and then I started you know buying setup for my online hosting I created a couple of uh, webinar um, projects and and topics that I could give to companies and to schools to kind of um, help them elevate their experience and their morale during this pandemic so I had to really figure out new things to do but at the same time I think I took it as an opportunity to slow down a little you know I, I feel like that was so bad, you it slowing so down Sam. You know me, I never used to sleep. Now I sleep eight hours. I'm so proud of it. Wow. My goodness. I mean, you know, because if you if you scroll through Joyce's Instagram, ang daming ganap talaga. And you know, you know, I forgot na ngayon nga, um, during your wedding, yeah, do you, I mean, that I think was a major pivot that you had to do. And then tuloy, tuloy na. And then you had to figure out uh, so many things along the way. Amazing. As Brother uh, J. Paul would say, you're an overcomer, girl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, Joycey, this is an ecumenical podcast, right? So we talk about everything under the umbrella of Christianity. So I'm going to have to ask you about your faith journey. And, you know, I remember, I think that was one of the reasons why we got close while working in magic, because we would have conversations about our faith. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I, I'm, maybe I asked you this already, but like, you know, what's your faith journey been like? Meaning, were you, like, did you start out being Catholic and then did you have a conversion experience along the way? Like, what are you now and how did it happen? Can I just add also, we had that one lunch, we were together um, and, and we ate. And I think that was the time that you were really making a serious decision mm. to have this faith journey. And you yeah. sat me down and we were having lunch and you were telling me about it. And I felt so happy because it was oh. something that we would constantly talk about in passing. Mm -hmm. But to, to hear you say finally that, you know what, I'm going to take this trip and I'm going to, you know, start looking for God and, and start looking at this journey if it's really something for me. And, and that was just an incredible moment. And I really felt special being able to share that with you. Just an anecdotal side note. But... <laughs> I, I always remember that anytime, especially when I saw uh, this podcast that you created. But for my faith journey, it's it's really been a long, tedious process that God has been gracious uh, to me. Uh, I, I grew up and I was born in a Christian household. I guess the, the, the long short of it is that when I was younger, we, we were very poor. So, and I, and I was, you know, a Christian and I was, um, I, I was in love with God. Like, even as a young kid, I went to a Christian um, grade school. I, you know, I, I pretty much grew up in a Christian household, but we weren't very well off. And my whole life, I thought, na, uh, you know what, maybe I should start thinking about you know, reaching for success and doing things that would fulfill my soul. 
And the long part of it is I came to a point in my life at, at 23 years old where I felt like I had achieved everything that I wanted to. I was able to achieve mm-hmm. the career success that I wanted. I was in a healthy relationship or in a relationship that I wanted to be in. I had a lot of money. I had a lot of things mm-hmm. under my belt. But I didn't have my relationship with God anymore because I felt like I had to set that aside and be with the world and of the world to get the things that I wanted. And I just remember being in that moment and thinking to myself, wow, I felt more fulfilled at peace and happy and joyful when I didn't have anything, but I had Jesus. And I Mm. felt so empty having everything and not having Jesus at the age of 23. So I really feel like that was the turning point in my life, you know, 23, thinking that I could be the one to give myself satisfaction and fulfillment and joy and finding out that you could have everything in the world and not have anything if you don't have God. So I think that was really like the changing time for me because all my life, it was just about tradition. You know, it was just about, oh, I read the Bible. If you ask me anything about the Bible, if you ask me about salvation, if you ask me about atonement, if you ask me about anything that was under the umbrella of Christianity, I could answer it. But then I realized that you could know things Mm -hmm. and not know God and it would make all the difference because you could know God and not know anything and it would make all the difference. So ever since that time at 23 that was also the year that i got diagnosed with depression and anxiety which was which is one of the reasons why i wanted to talk about that today um and ever since then you know it's it's been a push and pull as with any christian who's probably listening to this podcast you'll know that there are days and seasons when you're just so on fire for the lord that you feel like okay i can just worship all day and cry on my knees and and really celebrate my relationship with god and and you can see a glimpse of heaven. Uh, this is what heaven feels like, just being near the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then there are also days when you just have to force yourself to open your Bible and ask for forgiveness from God because you don't have that 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 want to to be with Him. So I guess that's the faith journey in, in the short form. It's not even short. I'm so sorry. No, that's it's great. Beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And you know, gosh, mm-hmm. I invite friends to come and share with us the, their faith story and every time like it's so surprising to me how willing they are to be so honest and so open and yeah it just surprises me every time and i think i'm just here like you know listening to this and i'm just like wow yeah yeah just for you to put it all out there um i think you know today's topic which is dealing with anxiety and depression um in the time of pandemic I think just, you know, from what we heard, it's something that you have dealt with pre-pandemic as well. Had me thinking about the angle of like, maybe as Christians, we feel like, wala na tayong karapatan ma-depress. Kasi the faith that we profess, diba, is like, oh, you know, we trust that God will take care of everything. He provides and He is fighting all our battles for us, going before us and all of that. And so, maybe from a non-believer's perspective, it kind of doesn't add up. So why are you depressed? But here you are, you know, really openly discussing how this was a real struggle for you. How did, so it started with that realization of, oh, I've exchanged now my relationship with God with things that I thought would make me happy, but ended up making me feel empty. It was that to start? I guess the start with, I feel like I've had depression very early on, even in my teens. And especially when I started going through therapy, my therapist was telling me, you know, you have a lot of childhood trauma that started manifesting in your younger years and then just became worse as you became an adult. And um, it it started there. I think that's why I, I felt like maybe I'll feel better and I'll be happier once I achieve the successes in life that I've had because now that I have this relationship with God, you know, everything's great. I love the Lord. I have a great relationship with Him. But maybe I'll feel better when I I have these other things. It's always like Jesus plus something. And I feel like that's the constant mistake that we Christians make. We think that God is just an addition to the happiness that we can encounter and and really experience in this life. But even in the Bible, it says the, the prize and the reward is not Jesus plus something. It's only Jesus. It's just Jesus. And everything else is an addition to that. Um but yeah, I think it started in my in my teenage years. And and also 
and also because of the experiences that I've had, you know, like with with childhood trauma and 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 I guess toxic relationships and a lot of familial problems and and things like that. It it all started with that, and I think the reason why. I wanted to start that conversation is because, yun nga, meron akong experience na there were moments when I was going through depression and anxiety where the medicines worked. And then there were also seasons when it was just a spiritual battle that I had to overcome and, and you know, deal with, with the Lord. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess also, like, it's a curiosity for me na parang, because I think that's another question I had coming into today's topic because I actually have a friend who is Catholic and she has bouts of depression, right? And she was telling me one time that she gets, that it's very upsetting for her. Now, when she shares to maybe someone who, like a friend who is religious and opens up about her depression, some of her religious friends will say, you're not praying enough kasi. Or, you know, you're not, like, this is a spiritual thing. So, baka you're not doing enough spiritual things. Um, and I think as a Christian, there's... De- <laughs> Brother James, it triggers me. <laughs> but I think there's definitely like a spiritual a- angle to anxiety and depression. Um, there's definitely a physiological angle as well. You know, it's a chemical thing. It is, yeah, trauma and all of that. So I suppose for someone who has never really been diagnosed with depression, I don't know what to make of that. Na parang sometimes the medicine works, sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah. you know, can you can I you give us some, yeah, clarity? I think for me, what happens is, okay, so... There are times when your bouts of depression really is just a lacking and a gap between you and what you know is supposed to be your disposition, which is um, you're supposed to be a Christian hedonist, right? Like you're supposed to be really just happy and joyful in the Lord. There are times talaga na it's, it's that. I really honestly think it's that. But then there are also times because this is, you have to realize also that this is a broken world that we live in. We are not yet in glory. So except experiencing depression is a real thing like it is something that people have to deal with it's not just a spiritual battle all the time although you can't also denounce the fact that it could be a spiritual battle alone but it could also be a physiological chemical imbalance that people go through and that's why i think it's so important to have both sides sides of the spectrum if you're going through it like for me, I don't just go to a psychiatrist and a psychologist. I also have a Christian counselor. Like I do, and 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 this is my. I think this is what I've been doing the past few years that has really helped me. I do everything that I can in my Christian walk. Like I really pray to the Lord. I I, I really I I go on weeks just fasting and praying and asking for God to help me. And if it still doesn't work, and then I see my doctor. Because I know already that I've, I've, I've done what I can in my spiritual battle and I continuously do it. But if that doesn't work, then maybe you are dealing with something that's physiological. Diba? And, yeah. and even with my Christian counselor, sometimes she says that mm-hmm. one of the, 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 the mistakes that Christians make is they over-spiritualize uh, a physiological battle that someone is going through, mm-hmm. something that's so mm-hmm. physical and debilitating for someone. It's like saying, okay, you have a broken knee, pag-pray mo lang yan, huwag ka pupunta sa doktor, kahit may nana na yan, hindi, ilaban mo lang, pag-pray mo lang. Like, God has given us, <laughs> you know, it, He has given us, yes, definitely pray about it, but God has also given us channels mm-hmm. of blessings like mm-hmm. doctors and medicines that we could easily reach out to for Him to bless us through. So, yeah. I don't see the point in cutting one or the other, just saying that it's spiritual or just saying that if it's physiological. I think it could be both. In my personal experience, it has really been both. Right, right. Instructor H is very enthusiastically agreeing with everything Joyce is saying. Instructor H, do you want to jump in? No, uh, that was just on point. Um, sometimes we tend to um, um, just focus on one one aspect of it that you just have to pray for it, even though you know it's uh, it's really hard. It's really um, going through that that physical being of that person. But really, we have to find the right balance. 
even though we are Christians and we profess our um, relationship with God, I think we also have to remind ourselves that there are things that we're going through physically. That's why we have two kinds of being, our physical being and our spiritual being. And uh, when you are already diagnosed with um, depression, then that means you need to seek advice. You need to seek attention from a professional who actually studied and who actually uh, knows how to deal with this. But I like what um, what she did before because she's doing that right balance that she asked guidance from a doctor or a professional and also asked guidance from a spiritual counselor because I think um, that's the best way to deal with this kind of situation that we, um, we should not... Um, take for granted our spiritual being, but also address this by um, by trying to um, get both sides of, of, of the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, if we think about it, it's almost like we get the best of both worlds. It's actually kind of a perk that we have, you know, that both sides are available to us. Brother Jay, why were you laughing kanina when I was telling the story of like, you know, you're not praying hard enough kasi. I just you know it. Those are the things that triggers me. You, know, you oh. always talk about. You know, really, I I guess uh, no. Um, thank you, Joyce, for your authenticity. I really really appreciate it. And this is something that resonates so strongly with me. Um, I've been in the youth ministry since I was thirteen years old, but I've I grew up with so much trauma. It's just really just trauma um I'll, I'll tell you a story so um 2017 i was i think six months married so like recently feast green hills was about three or four years i was already preaching every week ministering and i held my wife's hand and said babe i think i want to jump off our condo what the, because there's just so much pain and 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 I just really am grateful, but my wife knew me. That she knew that it was just isn't just that a spiritual problem, that I was going through something very internal, just embraced me, held my hand, and it happened every night. Like, oh, and then I just I'm gonna be a dad. I need to take care of what do I need to do? I, I was just like so sluggish. You know what? I couldn't do any work but preach. Like I only show up on Sunday, preach. And then be like dead for a week. Then preach, be dead, preach, then be dead. I couldn't do anything. And um, that's when I really like, okay, what, what, I need to do something. So oh, my wife is an occupational therapist. So she helped me. So praise God, the perks didn't have to pay. So, <laughs> um, but really, that's why I really got studying um, NLP. I don't know, Joyce, if you're familiar with that, neurolinguistics programming, et cetera, et cetera, coaching. And that's when I realized traumatic things, yes, you give it to God, and, and that's the spiritual side. But there's a physical side that it affects your subconscious so so every time what would happen I would I would see pictures when I would like do my processing I would see pictures of my parents fighting I would see pictures of my abuse and and so on and so forth and I had to like do a spiritual and 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 a physical and mental emotional all aspects of healing um so so with I just really resonate with that um it was hard. It was hard because my wife was pregnant and it was really and cetera. But I was I, I at but I was dealing with those with that pain since I was a child. I don't know if you guys experienced this that sometimes it's too painful, you'd rather be out to so forget the pain, to numb the pain. I, I grew up with that pain. Um because you see, if some anything goes if you're hopeless for more than six months, that's almost always clinical depression, anxiety. There's a mental health issue already. So, yeah. Um, so, do I pray? Yeah, I pray every week, every day. But I was going through that pain. Um, had to be counseled. Had to deal with my processing. Had That's why, Sam, I always work out. Because it actually helped me. I, I can't actually work out with 
um, mild. I need the parang masokista. I need the very terrible pain of yung kailangan na ihirapan talaga yung katawan ko to really normalize. Sobrang weird, but that's really what works. That's why CrossFit works for me. I need to like be in shock. Kailangan maubos yung energy ko to calm down. So wow. yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean, but and you know what? What I have what I can really preach about is that this this is that this does not come from God. But God allows this pain to happen for a bigger glory, for his completion of glory, for us, for people, etc. And that's why, you know, when people are struggling, I can relate because I am in pain a lot of times. I can cry with people who are suffering. I can embrace them. And that's why you've seen, Sam, you've seen, you've been in Green Hills, you've been with people. And that's why they're in church. That's why we understand each other because their shepherd knows their pain, is in pain with them. Um, so yes, there is depression and anxiety. It's okay to be depressed if you're a Christian, but that doesn't define you. The glory of God defines you. Whoa. I, yes. I think I was just thinking of like, you know, having to be a preacher when you are in that much pain and it takes everything you have to get up once a week and inspire your congregation and then you're just out you know for the rest of the time and i i, I don't know, i'm just i guess i'm just trying to wrap my head around that and yes because we kind of tease brother j paul about posting like workout videos oh you're showing us a man how you're getting sweaty <laughs> ganyan, ganyan. but now like you know i'm realizing that there's actually a deeper reason for this you have this is kind of how you cope um, I guess with you know dealing uh, with this right now, my goodness! It's and that's why I get judged for having yes. tattoos. Sorry, I have tattoos. Say, eh? so because it's one way at a, a time for coping with the pain. So until oh, until I realized hmm, it's just part of you. But anyway, that's just. I mean, I'm not saying you should, but anyway, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow, wow. Instructor H, have you ever been depressed? Yeah. Uh, honestly, hindi pa. Um, I think I'm able to share to you before that the lowest um, lows that I had before is when my father passed away a few years ago. And I know na kahit na it's super sad uh, for me na talagang nakaka, um, we're going through grief during that time. But I know na hindi ko siya kayang ikumpara dun sa depression that is clinically diagnosed. And I know, kung ako nahirapan nun, for sure, yung mga tao na nag-go through depression, it's even harder for them. And I like what um, Brother J. Paul mentioned a while ago, that it's okay for a Christian to be depressed. Because, yes, we are Christians, pero hindi dapat maalis doon yung, yung fact that we're still human beings. We still have emotions. We're, we still go through the challenges, the trials in our lives. At kapag pinagdadaanan natin to, mahirap talaga siya. And siguro yung pwedeng makita natin na maaring difference uh, for us Christians is that we usually draw comfort from the Bible. We we try to go, um, to go closer to God. And um, despite that, depression is real. Ayokong mm-hmm. parang... Sinasabi ng ibang tao na hindi, hindi depression yan. Ano, mag-pray ka lang. Eh, yung katol na sinabi mo kanina. But depression is real. And kapag binaliwala natin, it could lead to something na worse. And alam ko na mahirap to, pero I think it's very important, katulad nung sa story ni Brother J. Paul, na you open up yourself. Try to talk to someone na you can trust. And even kay Joyce na yun, uh, she consulted a... Uh, um, a professional. Because if we just keep it by ourselves, the people won't know about what we're going through. And when they don't know that we're going through some problem or some struggles in our life, ang tendency parang isipin lang, ay okay lang naman yan. Mm. Pero I was thinking, paano kapag hindi vinerbalize ni Brother J. Paul yung, yung gusto niyang pagtalon sa condo, we never know. Baka 
uh, diba? Hindi na natin siya kasama dito. So, that's how important we open our we open up ourselves to the people we trust. Of course, syempre, ayaw natin ang brother Shea Paul. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> imagine ko lang kung wala ako, sino, anyway. So, my mind goes to different areas. <laughs> but, diba, God has, um, has a purpose of every for everything. Kaya nga na dito ka. And that's why hindi nangyari yung kung ano man yung iniisip mo before. But really, um, when we feel that we are broken, when we feel like we are so down, we, we just have to seek um, the the proper guidance, the proper um, way on how to deal things. And uh, parang cellphone lang yan. So, di ba, kapag nasira yung phone mo, what you will do, not unless na marunong kang i-fix yung phone mo, ay pupunta ka sa technician, someone who can fix this. And we as human beings, when we feel broken or when we know that there's a problem within us, it's nice that we go to our Creator who is God because He can also help us. Or kung hindi man, we can also ask for um, professionals, katulad na sinabi ni Joyce kanina, because God can also use them as a tool para matulungan tayo dun sa mga struggles natin. I, I like that angle. Na parang, you know, as human beings who believe in a creator, who can fix us but the one who made us. So he's a good place to go to. I am, you know, Instructor H, I appreciate how, because I think the word depression also gets very easily thrown yeah. around. Like something minor happens. I'm like, oh, I'm so depressed. Like I have a zit right now. I have a third eye between my eyes. I'm so depressed. But, you know, I mean, but, but which is a real, yeah, that, that's really happening. But, you know, like, I also appreciate how, I mean, losing a parent, that's a difficult situation. And that's some real grief and mourning that you're going through there. But I appreciate how you made the distinction between a difficult life experience and depression. Um, you know, one is something that, sadly, we go through and have to deal with. You know, the other is like a serious condition um, that needs medical attention, you know, if it gets really bad. So, Joycey, just to bring it, you know, back to you, has this pandemic and, you know, everything that you've been dealing with, like, has it been triggering for the anxiety and the depression? I mean, I think on some level, everyone is dealing with some kind of anxiety just because, oh, my goodness, when is this going to end? When in, what is the work situation going to look like? You know, all of that. How has it been for you? Definitely. Um, uh, actually, when uh, Brother J. Paul was sharing kanina, I had the, the same exact experience with my husband. And we live on, we used to live on the 39th floor. So our, our balcony was, is in our room. So there was a time during the pandemic where I literally had to ask my husband to sleep near the door of the balcony because I was just so anxious that I was going to wake up and just jump because that, that was my thought process every day. That was my thought process every day for the past few weeks. Tapos talagang pinagpapray ko kay Lord. And every time I'm awake, okay lang. Pero yung, yung, yung whisper sa akin ng enemy, pag natulog ka, magigising ka na lang, tapos tatalong ka na lang bigla sa balcony. As in, ganung levels yung anxiety ko. Like, when I'm awake, I'm fine because I'm praying, I'm pleading with God. But when I'm about to sleep, I could, I could barely sleep because I was just so afraid. Um, so yeah, definitely like this pandemic has been tough on a lot of people, especially people who have gone through depression and anxiety their whole life. Um, and you know, I think one of the things also that I was thinking about when, when you guys were talking was it's, it's fascinating how God, even in the dire situation, like my depression and my anxiety of me thinking about that, um, and being worried that I can't do that to my husband, like you know, one of my regrets of marrying was before I had I had no responsibility to anyone. Like I could literally go and take my own life, and my only responsibility is towards me and and my God. That's it. Yeah. I have to take care. I I have my own family. Obviously, I love my family, but you know, now it's different. I'm one with another person. If I sever myself from this life, I pretty much sever myself from another human being. Um, but. But I think also through the depression and anxiety, I, I started to ask myself, like, why am I depressed and anxious during this pandemic when I know who my God is? And I think that question was so important because it made me realize, was traveling my idol? 
was comfort my idol was um was comfort of a financial stability my idol and my god like you start asking yourself questions okay yes it is bad that the pandemic hit it is bad that this thing is happening to a lot of i feel bad yes but is it an excuse for me to go back to that and circle back to my depression and my anxiety when i know who my god is so i i don't denounce the fact that that yes it, it can be a physiological problem for me also but then it also made me realize now you know what at the beginning of the pandemic it was all just my mindset because i was thinking about the old life that i had you know what a what a wonderful life i lived i traveled every month i was working every day i was doing all of these wonderful things but does that compare to my relationship and satisfaction to the lord it shouldn't right and and i think i think as hard as it, it is to, to realize that sometimes God allows the most incredible suffering for His greater glory and our good, it makes you better and more understanding and more compassionate. And it also makes you realize and makes you remember that the satisfaction is only in Christ. Talagang yun lang yung kailangan mong paghawakan, panghawakan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Preach, wow. Preach it. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this is some powerful stuff, man. Um, you know, one of the big things that I've learned on this podcast, having my conversations with my friends here, um, is that the negative experiences, the difficulty, the suffering, this is like a classic question for someone who is coming to the faith. We learned that God is good. God is love. He only wants good things for us. So why is there suffering in the world? And what I have deduced from my conversations on this podcast is that 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 is not what God wants for us. Um, But God can use those things to, you know, transform us, to help him, to help us seek him, because that's certainly been my experience. Um, So I think that's like something that I just want to put out as we're having this conversation, because I think it's really easy for people to, experience difficulty in life and think and blame God for everything, you know? And that's just something that's come up on the show over and over again. Um, I guess, you know, from there, I want to ask you guys then, because the topic is, okay, how do we deal with it? It's a reality. A lot of us are going through it, um, you know, to some degree. Have you figured out you know, concrete ways that you want to share with our, our listeners and viewers on how we can deal with this right now, what works for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> what I find is, especially if you're going through bouts of depression and anxiety, uh, you don't, sometimes, you don't have the want to spend time with God. But I remember watching a preaching before that said, the more you don't want to spend time with God, the more you should. Because the closer you are to darkness, the more you should be seeking for light. Yeah. And that was such a great reminder for me. Sometimes even the the Amen. best preachers and the, the best Christians that we know go through this. And what they do is they just make a choice. It's not an emotional thing. Sometimes you have to remember that your relationship with God does not necessarily have to be an emotional thing. You won't always be on fire for the Lord. But when you choose every day to carry your cross and follow Christ, that's the most important choice that you'll be making for that day. And even if it's just a five-minute prayer where you actually come and confess that, Lord, you know what? I don't understand what I'm going through right now. I am going through depression. I, I don't feel like talking to you, but I am doing it because I know that this is what you have commanded. As in talaga, isipin mo na lang, obedience above all else. And then everything else, the satisfaction, the joy, it will follow. Because what did, what, did, what does the Bible say about this? About seek first God and everything else will follow. So seek first God every morning. When you don't feel like it, just seek first God, everything else will follow. That's one. And another thing that I've noticed that has really helped me is use the, the materials that are readily available to us by created by Christians who talk about God and who have their love for God. Use that as something that will inspire you also anytime i don't feel like or i don't feel i'm in a season of depression i don't feel like speaking to the lord i read a book by ravi zacharias or john piper or john MacArthur or some other christian or c.s lewis or 
or, or, or all of these other authors who have loved the Lord and talked about their love for the Lord. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, I've experienced that and I want to experience it again. So just be surrounded by these authors and people who love God and, and force yourself sometimes, force it for five minutes and you'll find yourself really flowing and falling into that flow of joy without you even noticing. And that's really the Holy Spirit, diba? The more you seek after God, He draws near to us. So I find that that's so that's so helpful. And, you know, having having community and having accountability partners. In our church, we have a D group, like small groups for women or for married people. If you can go to Bible studies, watch videos online, it helps a lot. It won't it won't feel like the right thing to do at the moment, but then you'll find yourself after you've consumed the content, you're just like, you know what? I feel so much better already. So that's really what's yeah. helped me during this time. Wow, well, dami na nun, ah. so um, No, 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 no. I meant that in a good way. Like we have a lot to draw from there. We have a lot of options. What's your routine like? You know, how do you spend time with God? Like do you do it in the morning, in the evening? Like what do you do? What's your routine? Yeah, so I do every morning and every night. But then one of my favorite um, preachers, Matt Chandler, um, actually said something like, you should set alarms um, throughout your day just to pray and pause for, for two minutes. How many times? So, like five or six times a day, like randomly. I mean, it doesn't have to be a long pause, right? So sometimes I would, and especially, for example, if I'm praying for, um, anxiety or if I'm praying for salvation for my friends and family. It's just two minutes where you see your alarm go off. Like I, I wake up at seven and I do my morning devotion. And you know what I do? I actually do praise and worship by myself before I do my devotion. And that actually has elevated my experience of devotion. Like I play a couple of Christian songs. I worship and I sing to the Lord before I read my devotion and before I journal. And that changes the whole thing before I pray again. And then I set up another alarm at 10 a.m. to just pray, like one minute, just say, hi, Lord. I'm, I'm, I I'm, just want to say thank you for the day that you've given me. And just throughout your day. And what you'll notice if your life is tethered by prayer, everything changes because God wants to be near us. We should also long to be near God. Right? We, are, we are created by a wonderful, compassionate, loving, just Father. And He's given us Christ. He's given us everything that we have. Every good experience comes from the Lord. What is one minute of your day just touching base with that? Right? Touching base with, with, with the Word of God or touching base with our Creator to say thanks or to even lift up your worries to him. So, yeah. Dude, I want to give them all my minutes now. I mean, <laughs> after hearing that, you know, it's like, goodness, <laughs> this girl, man, dropping some wisdom on the show. I love it. No, this is really powerful. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brother J. Paul does a podcast called the Brother, <laughs> I'm not the Brother J. Paul Hernandez podcast, the J. Paul Hernandez podcast. And, <laughs> On the last episode, Brother Jay, you were actually talking about how we can be happy when, you know, bad things are happening around us. You know, it was a short episode, but I thought, like, this would be a good episode for you to kind of share um, what you've talked about over there. I actually forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 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 I mean, thank you. Thanks for putting me on the spotlight. Uh, no, no, no. Let me remind you. Let me remind you. <laughs> no, I think I remember. Uh, yeah. just, um, no, because I always talk about it. Because bad things have been happening since the dawn of time. Lot, etc. Mm -hmm. All Bible characters have gone through tremendous suffering. And I was teasing my mom a lot of times. Because, mom, why did you name me? Because my first name is Jeremiah. Mom, why did you name me after the depressive prophet? Like who who writes a book on lamentations? Why is why? No, just just kidding. <laughs> um, what one thing that really is powerful is gratitude. Just being grateful. You know, for example, it's really the mindset. Everything everyone was saying, Joyce, you were saying this. Um, for example, the one thing I had to decide on. Somewhere along the lines of this pandemic, Lord, I was just really struggling. I had to pay my staff. Cash was not coming in. 
church problems so many every single day this person was dying everyone's like oh how do we allocate resources etc so just like lord i'm 33 years old and i'm how do i i'm just so young for all of these problems but the gratitude is lord thank you for calling me such a young age that there are so many people that you can use but for some reason you decided to choose me for this i don't know what i why i have this platform but if this this gives you glory i will always say yes so bad things happen to good people but how do you become happy for example we know who makes iPhones apple who makes chicken joy jollibee when you know who your manufacturer is, you are in your identity. So who are we? The problem we get depressed is because, I mean, not just the only problem. We, we get that anxious is because we forget who our creator is. So like Simon became Peter, Saul became Paul, Isaac, ah, taba, Jacob became Israel. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're getting my Bible. God has a way of renaming us of who we are destined to be. So whenever I lose my identity, I, I close my eyes and I pray, Lord, who am I in your name? Who am I? Who do you see me? And I'm not Jeremiah. I am not Paul. I'm not J. Paul. When in the stillness, I repeat, stillness of my heart, God reminds me, you're my beloved. So sometimes... We just have to be quiet, be in God's presence, and ask God, Lord, sino ba ako? And then let God remind you, who are you? Because your labels, your issues, tell you a side of you. But your creator knows you in and out. He knows every cell, fiber, being, every thought, everything about you. And he knows who you can be. My favorite Christian line that is not in the Bible from Irenaeus, the glory of God is man fully alive. This is a feast. We are at the feast, right? This feels like a preaching by Brother J. Paul. Wow. It's Joyce is the one who opened the door. Thank you, Joyce, for, for this. No, yeah, absolutely. I honestly didn't know yes. that, like, Brother J. Paul, you mm -hmm. had, you know, a, a depression story that we could draw from today as well. And, you know, again, like, I, I don't know. Like, my guests surprised me over and over again with how willing to how willing they are to talk about these extremely personal things. And I super appreciate that about all of you. Um, before we, okay, how, how do we wrap this? I suppose as Christians who, you know, mean well, um, cause I don't think it's the right thing to say to a depressed person, like you should try praying more or, you know, read the Bible or whatever. How do we be good friends to them? You know, um, uh, who acknowledge that this pain, this difficulty is real, but also want to, you know, introduce them to the spiritual aspect of things. Because yes, as Christians, we have benefited so much from our experience with God. You know, like how would you talk to a friend like that? I think also what um, Brother J. Paul was talking to Kanina, it, it reminded me of a story that um, Ravi was was talking about in one of his uh, preachings. Parang he was talking about the story in the Bible where they were fighting about tax, right? And they were asking Jesus, so should we not pay tax? And Jesus said, whose face is on that coin? It's Caesar's, right? So give Caesar what is due to him. And Ravi extended it saying, but whose face is on whose face is on you? It is the image of God, right? So give to God what is due to him. I think Ooh. as, and that that was so powerful for me because I think one of the reasons why um, people experience depression in the spiritual battle is because we don't know who we are. We are constantly being pulled towards so many directions that I'm a teacher or I am a mom or I am a wife or I am whatever, right? 
But in reality, who you should be is a child of God. And that's what you should remember. In that alone, because of the Imago Day, you have value. You have intrinsic value that nobody can take away from you. Because God created us in His image. We have an infinitesimal value that nothing in this world can take away or define for us. It has already been defined by Christ on the cross being risen after three days. And I think saying that to someone with depression would be a lot of help because one of the reasons why we're so depressed these days is we don't know who we are and we don't know what our value is. We don't even know if we have value, especially with social media. You think that if you only have 100, 100 followers, 100 likes, your value is less than the person who has 2 million likes or 2 million followers because that's how society works. So I think that's that's one way to do it. The second one is just for me, honestly, the way that people have blessed me these past few years is just by being present, you know, just being present and listening to me, um, being present anytime that I want to talk about the things that I'm going through, telling me that they're praying for me and that they're actually praying for me, directing me towards the Bible, but also being open to the fact that Yes, it could be something that's physiological and that you could help me go to the doctor if I need to, right? I've had Christian friends who we've talked about praying together when we're going through depression, anxiety, bouts of those. And then we've also talked about praying together before we started our new med medication or we've prayed together before we ended our medication and before we changed doctors and things like that. I think it's just a lot of being compassionate and empathetic towards others and not closing your mind and and insisting on living ha and insisting on having your friends live their lives the way that you want them to. You just have to open open yourself to them and open that relationship with them before you can even I, I think that's one of the, the ways we evangelize right we open a relationship with them we, we actually care for them first we don't just tell them you should go and seek God why would they do that if they don't trust you love you and 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 have any ex personal experience with you they can't it's it's not humanly possible they have to trust you first and and know that you're a friend first before they can even look to God and honestly sometimes we're the only Bibles that people will read and see. Like some people will never open their Bibles, but if they see the way that we live and the way that we love them, they will ask themselves, who, sino ba to? Bakit ganito yung puso niya para sa akin? And then they can trace it all back to God. So I think that's it for me. Well, that's that's it? That's it? Okay, yeah. Yun lang naman, guys. You know? <laughs> ang ganda, ang ganda. You know what? I mean, yeah, instead of telling a friend, maybe you should pray more, the better approach is, can we pray together? Or yes. can I pray for you? You know, and offering physical, like practical things. Do you need me to be there with you when you do X, Y, Z? Do you need me to show up for something? Wow, that is so much more meaningful than giving them unsolicited advice, you mm -hmm. know, on maybe a, a relationship they did, but they don't even know about. Um, that we have with God. That's some good stuff, Joyce. I love that. Yeah. Instructor H? <laughs> Actually, everything that I was thinking, sinabi na niya. So, parang, <laughs> parang, Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Was I on my car today? I really am not the time. I'm so no. sorry. I'm just that so is <laughs> But really, everything... You can find it in there. Kung ano yung sinabi niya, yun yun, na you have to be with that someone, na maramdaman niya na you are available, na you are willing to help, and even listen. Kasi if you won't listen to that person, paano mo malalaman yung struggles niya? Paano mo malalaman kung paano ka tutulong sa kanya? That's how important for you to be there and for you to be open in communicating with, with that person. And also, it's important for you to pray. If, if, um, if, possible pray for that person or pray with that person because yeah. this is your way of um leading that person back to god and katulad na sinabi niya kanina he she also uh, she also mentioned about um how we are created in the image and likeness of god and that's why we we also have to go back to the bible to the word of god and and be created in the original design of god for us so actually everything that she mentioned Yun yun nasa isip ko talaga, guys. Ano? Yeah. 
You stole his line. <laughs> you stole his line. So one mind kiss tayo, di ba? Ganun pa Christian, one, di ba? One yeah. Mind, right? One soul. <laughs> Brother J. <Jay. laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, first of all, we miss Ravi Zacharias. I mean, he's been a blessing to the Christian world. Uh, beautiful. Um, I, I'm going to share what my disciple, how my disciple helped me. So I was struggling. I wanted to be like, I want my old life to be gone. And I just really wanted to give my life to God. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. So, and then he said, J. Paul, people can sometimes be like shirts. You outgrow them. And if these people... Do not lead you closer to God. You don't need to unfriend them, but you need to let go and wear a different shirt of people who will help you become a better Christian. So that's what I did. Um, some people got hurt. Some people got mad. But I just, if I stayed in that area, I will just be repeating the cycle of sin over and over again, the cycle of pain. So when I became okay, you know, I was able to establish uh, establish our friendship again, be, be close again. And, and stuff. I uh, I guess I want to relate it to um, the 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 worst. Actually, the worst disciple apostle was Matthew, because he was um, a tax collector. He was the scum of the earth. He everybody hated them, so he had no friends. And that was your that's becomes your identity. So I guess I want to talk to people who are going through the anxiety. And and if that's you, you be, that the, the anxiety, the depression becomes your identity. And what does Jesus do? Hey, let's come with me. And you leave that scenario, and you be with Jesus. And when you are present with other people, it changes you, even if you don't know it. Um, um, Proverbs twenty seven verse seventeen says, "As man, I as." As iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. You have to be with the right people. So with that being said, if you are going through anxiety, um, find the right people who will journey with you. I, I, I always say it in our episodes, find the right church. And just in case you're an accidental judger, we don't judge you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but... Um, People say, hey, kasi hindi ko alam, hindi ko naintindihan. And that's why we're Christians. We're called to love the extra mile. We're called to understand where people are coming from. If you're not dealing with pain, then maybe God has gifted you with that. To hold a person who is not going through, who is going through anxiety, I mean. So for example, I love being with Harold because he's always happy. And it reminds me to be to find joy in the Lord. Even if you know he's being the church is being attacked over and over again, I still see him smiling. And and it reminds me, I have a brother in Christ that chooses to be happy, even when bad things are happening. So we're here. The church is to complete one another in the glory of God, and that becomes the new heaven and new earth. Wow, you guys. This is, I, I'm so sure that people who are experiencing anxiety and depression, by hearing your stories and um, how we would like to be good friends to these people, like this must be so comforting. Um, as Christians, we're not here to deny like any of the medical or physical aspects of this thing. Um, we can draw from both worlds and use it to our advantage. And I, I thank you guys so much for being so honest today and open. And Joyce, thank you. I know you're super busy and you're dealing with, you know, moving houses and all that stuff. Like it's just crazy times for everyone. And it's such a rough year. And I hope that people find some comfort in today's conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joyce. And thank you, Brother Jay, Instructor H, um, their shows, their thank churches. You information on bible classes open worship all that stuff is happening and it's in the show description so check that out and we have an email address if you guys want to write to us the narrow door podcast at gmail.com joyce where do people find you where do we go yeah you can follow me at joyce spring and also check out my website joyspring.com my journal is out so if you guys like journaling and you want your own journal i've made Ooh. and created 
an adulting journal with the seven pillars of adulting. I talk about my faith. I talk about uh, physical health, emotional, mental health, and also my podcast, Adulting with Joy Spring. So thank you for having me on the show. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm super blessed to be here. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. No, I think we, yeah, we were... Here. Yeah, we were so blessed by this conversation. We are blessed. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.